We are here with Paolo Macedo, the Secretary General of the AIDLR, the International Association for the Defense of Religious Liberty. Welcome, Paolo. Thank you, Andreas. Paolo, uh, the AIDLR is an accredited NGO uh, at the European institutions. Mm, what are its main goals and activities there? Well, first of all, thank you for um, the question about AIDLR, about the European Union, but also not only at the European level, mm -hmm. we are accredited uh, also at the UN level, mm -hmm. uh, at the ECOSOC, at the OSCE and the Council of Europe. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the work of AIDLR mm -hmm. to stand and to defend and promote religious liberty mm -hmm. and human rights, uh, especially on freedom of religion and belief, on those institutions. Mm -hmm. But your question is precisely about the European Union. What we try to do here is to engage in uh, especially three uh, foundational levels. The first one is, of course, to defend and promote religious liberty. That means that we are keeping uh, ourselves informed, clipping whatever comes out of the European Union mm -hmm. uh, through newsletters to the communities and our contacts. And we have this liaison uh, to our IADL national chapters, mm -hmm. informing them on what is going on. This is a first uh, very important thing. It's the information procedure that we need to, to have to our national chapters. The second one mm -hmm. is uh, to engage directly with uh, the European institutions especially with uh, members of the European Parliament and uh, specialized people from uh, the European Commission. What we do is we send our Conscience and Liberty magazine, mm -hmm. we raise awareness about key uh, issues uh, that relate to religious liberty, and we, in we engage with them in a formal way as an institution and in an informal way as individuals. Mm -hmm. um, the third pillar is to engage with uh, um, FORB, what we call FORB, Freedom of religion and belief with the, the FORB community in Brussels. So we belong to a platform that is called EPRIT, European Platform Against um, Intolerance and Discrimination on Religion Phrases. Uh, we cooperate with them by uh, standing for FORB. We have um, uh, almost monthly meetings and uh, we have statements together. We organize conferences and meetings together. Mm -hmm. And so this community stands for FORB for all, of course, but each one brings its own perspective. Mm. And of course, AIDLR, as many others, stand for the principle of religious liberty, but also has a specific vision that twilight to our present days. And that vision mm -hmm. stands for the principle of uh, the freedom of conscience, which for us is very important historically. Uh, that was our beginning in 1946 from John Ostbaum, and also the separation between the, the church and the state which is also a very important point in our work. Besides, of course, advocacy items um, and, and other issues that rela relate to religious uh, liberty that are important, those two pillars are distinguish us as an association. Very interesting, thank you. Uh, please let me add another question. Um, during uh, this meeting in Brussels, Eidler received some important visitors uh, explain who came and what they, uh, was their contribution to the meeting? Well, th their contribution was very uh, was paramount for our work, for the understanding of the Brussels community and work, first of all. But not only that, uh, it was very gracious mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. by receiving these uh, um, four community agents here in Brussels, we have made in a couple of days like a, a, um, an an year, two years training session by learning from them. So we invited, as we had the national chapters meeting here, mm -hmm. so the secretary generals from different countries came. We had 13 uh, national chapters represented here and also people coming from the United States. Irla was here mm -hmm. and coming from the UK and Ireland and so on. So um, what, what we tried to have is instead of just having an internal training session, mm -hmm. we invited people from the FORB community of the European Union to tell us about their work mm -hmm. so that we could learn about their perspective and also their experience. Mm -hmm. And we also could share our own perspective and experience. Mm -hmm. So last Tuesday, we are speaking now in a Thursday, mm -hmm. two days ago, uh, we had here the Vice President of the European Parliament that is responsible for a series of uh, committees, uh, overseas a series of 
of committees in the parliament. One of those is the Constitutional Issues Committee. Mm -hmm. And Pedro Silva Pereira is his name, a member of parliament. And he came to talk about his vision about FORB, uh, human rights from an European parliament perspective. And of course, uh, also the what, what are the upcoming trends about uh, European policies and the European reality. And then the following day, we had a, a panel of uh, four very important agents at the European level too, two of them from the European Commission. Mm -hmm. We had Vincent Depagne, who is the responsible, the coordinator for the Article 17 dialogue mm -hmm. between the European Commission and churches and civil society entities and religious communities. We also had uh, Juan José Garcia Carreño, mm -hmm. who is the fourth responsible in the area of the European External Action Service. Mm -hmm. this, uh, this service is the diplomatic service of the European Commission that presses and tries to influence third countries from, the, from, from Europe, so apart from Europe, that don't respect human rights and FORB. We also invited uh, Elisabetta Kitanovic from uh, the conference uh, of uh, European churches, CAC, mm -hmm. to come uh, and present to us um, the vision of a, a religious community on FORB, on the um, European uh, um, affairs. And finally, we had Anastasia Hartmann mm -hmm. from Open Doors International, an evangelical uh, limbed association, Christian association that stands for religious liberty in terms of advocacy. So with these five agents, what we tried to offer our secretary generals was a broad perspective about the work in Europe and especially how our European agents, the European community that fight for um, freedom of um, religion or, and belief, how are, they, how are they working to defend and to promote this paramount principle. Thank you very much for the conversation, Paolo. Thank you.